Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Rebecca Windsor. I'm a veterinary neurologist at Wheat Ridge Animal Hospital and really excited today to talk about what our attempts have been over the last few years to find a cure for pug dog encephalitis. So first, I just wanted to start off by telling you a story. So this is a story about Walter, Walter the beefcake. He's here in the gym um, working out with his little beefcake tag. Walter's a dog that is very special to me. His family is very special to me. So I thought he was a good one to start talking about because unfortunately, his story is very typical for what we see with dogs with pug dog encephalitis. And so looking at his history, according to dad, he reported that he had been completely normal until the day before. And then that day he had suddenly started seizuring. And so he had a four hour long seizure by the time that we saw him. And unfortunately, part of that was distance related. Uh, Walter's from Aspen. And so they drove with him for four hours from Aspen to get to Wheat Ridge. And at the time that he arrived at the hospital, he was still actively seizuring. And so immediately on presentation, we started him on anti-seizure drugs. He was given midazolam to stop the seizure, and he was loaded with phenobarbital and Keppra as long-acting anticonvulsants to try to prevent further seizures. Right off the bat, we started him on an anti-inflammatory steroid, and we gave him a medication called mannitol to reduce pressure within his brain. So this is a look of the MRI for Walter. So these lesions, even in someone who's not used to reading an MRI, are pretty easy to see. And so this is looking at him in a sagittal image from the side. So front part of the brain, back part of the brain. And then this is a cross-sectional image. And so you can see in Walter all these areas of really, really severe brightness on this T2-weighted image. So whenever we see white in this image, it's consistent with fluid. So we have some fluid that's normal in the ventricles here. But all of this is fluid that's very, very abnormal, consistent with necrosis in the brain. And this is a very typical look for necrotizing meningoencephalitis in the pug. And so based on his breed and his MRI, we diagnosed him with NME. He was treated aggressively with immunosuppressives. He was continued on a midazolam CRI to try to prevent seizures. He continued to be loaded with other anti-seizure medicines. But despite all of that, he continued to have seizures and ultimately developed a difficulty breathing and was euthanized within 24 hours of presenting to our hospital. And so looking back a little bit more into his history and talking to mom, who had a little bit of a different perspective, she felt like Walter had not been as interactive for the several months prior to starting this seizure. And they'd also noticed some abnormal movements at home. He seemed to have a circling type of behavior that wasn't always happening, but definitely enough that they noted it and brought him to their primary care veterinarian who presumptively diagnosed him with an ear infection um, just based on having had a history of allergies. They assumed that was what was going on. Um, one reason the owners were really worried about Walter is and obviously it was devastating losing him, but they also had his siblings at home. So these are his two half siblings here, Mary Catherine and Aloise. Both of those ended up being enrolled in our studies as well. So they're very worried about the potential of having this disease in their other pugs as well. And so this is a really good summary for a lot of families of what I consider these tragic questions of NME that we almost talk to every family about after they're diagnosed. Those are, how did this come on so fast? Are there any symptoms we possibly could have missed to know that they might have had this? Is there any way we could have prevented this? And how can we avoid going through this with another pug? And so based on the experience of Walter and unfortunately so many other pugs and pug families, um, we've gone on these studies over the past few years to try to see if we can identify uh, potential early causes of NME and preventative strategies for NME. And so this is an overview of what we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about the definition of necrotizing meningoencephalitis, which is known as pug dog encephalitis. Also we'll talk about what happens to the brain. What are the symptoms that we see in dogs with this disease? We'll review the genetic risk and testing genetically for NME in the pug and talk quite a bit about the similarities between NME and multiple sclerosis in humans. We'll talk about the early screening tests we have now for pugs with NME and what clinical trials we're doing here at Wheat Ridge and expanding into other hospitals as well to try to alter this disease progression.